In my previous video, I lived in a tree house in Costa Rica, but in this video, I'll be taking you through a chill day in the capital, San Jose. So if you're here for just one day, here are a few things you can do. And first up is trying some Costa Rican coffee. Hello friends, so today I'm here in San Jose, which is the capital of Costa Rica, and I'm here for one day before I start at a surf and yoga camp tomorrow but I wanted to spend the day showing you to a few spots here in the city and the first being a cafe, one of the best cafes in San Jose. It's called Cafeoteca. And I wanted to show you some of the coffee here, which is very core to Costa Rican culture. So at this particular coffee shop, they actually source from 15 different family-run farms from the eight different regions of Costa Rica. So let's head inside. As soon as I got into the coffee shop, I was greeted by Betsa, who shared a little bit more of the background of the cafe. We are a, a specialty cafeteria, and we have a coffee from the eight regions, the regions of Costa Rica, with more than uh, 15 varieties of coffee. We offer a different experience, and we offer a different kind of methods to prepare the coffee, like the Kimex, Katura uh, from Costa Rica, the Kesbet, many uh, mythos to make a coffee and to have different uh, flavors and tastes about the coffee. As I continued chatting with Betsa, I learned that one of the main goals of Cafeoteca is to teach people how to drink a really good cup of coffee. Cafeoteca is actually a part of the third wave movement of coffee, which is all about making the consumer feel special and more importantly, educating people on the story behind the cup, one created by farmers, producers, importers, roasters, and baristas. Yeah. Alright guys, so we have our food that has arrived. We have these vegan mushroom tacos. They look delicious. And we have our first coffee. It's called Fatalio, which is the farm that the coffee beans are sourced from. Let's give it a try. Mm. Let's go ahead and give the tacos a first bite. It has avocados in there and mushrooms. It looks really good. Mm. Okay, that is so good. Whoa. I believe there's some artichokes in this, which is delicious. The flavors, wow. I am so impressed. Mushroom tacos are actually really delicious. Mm. So of course, not only their coffee is absolutely delicious, but the food is very good as well. I am going to go ahead and finish the rest of this, and they're actually going to be bringing out a few different rounds of coffee. For each cup, I was given the barista shared with me the background in each coffee, including the farm it was produced at, the factories involved, and the process. For this cup, it used the milling process or natural process, and was made using a Chemex coffee maker, and the flavor of the coffee is a lot more fruity. All right, our next coffee has come out. This is from the farm La Cumbre Tarazú. Apparently, Tarazú is the only region in the country where coffee fields predominate kilometer after kilometer. So fun fact, actually a lot of the finalists of the Cup of Excellence competition were from Tarasu. Mm. So this one uses the honey process. Alright guys, we now have our last coffee. This is from the estate coffee Finca and the worker here said that this just might be the best coffee in the world. So that is a pretty big statement, uh, so we'll have to give it a try for ourselves, but apparently there are over 30 flavors in this coffee. All right, let's give it a try. Mm. So this cup had a flavor that tasted a bit more like brown sugar in flavor. And overall, I'd say I'm a pretty avid coffee drinker, but this entire experience definitely gave me a much greater appreciation for the taste of my coffee, as well as where it comes from. We have so many coffee shops in the States, but I think I have yet to go to one that really goes out of their way to showcase the farms and farmers that produce it. And it was really nice getting to learn from the workers and read some of the stories behind the cups. And I could really feel how passionate everyone that worked here was about coffee. Before I left, I asked Betsa what she loved the most about coffee and she lit up. For her, she loves how it makes her feel and how each one provides her a different experience. 
What do you love the most about Costa Rican coffee? Coffee makes me feel like in a new experience in like another world that I didn't know about. So it's amazing we can have in one coffee cup. For me, it's the best work that I have because I'm learning about the coffee and how the coffee can change your mind, change one day. <laughs> If you have a bad day, you can change it by the coffee or if you are having a good day, you can accompany that day with a coffee cup. We are now headed to Galeria Namu, a fair trade art gallery for local and indigenous artists from Costa Rica and surrounding Central American countries. And now we're going to chat about the owner to learn a little bit more about the artisans, tribe, and unique collections of pieces here. But before I get into that, you might be wondering why showing an art gallery in Costa Rica is important. What really drew me to Gallery Namu is their mission in celebrating the legacy of the first people and tribes of Costa Rica and sharing the culture that is often not thought of anymore. So it was amazing being able to honor the array of incredible indigenous artwork and artists here. So welcome to the Gallery Namu. We uh, founded the gallery in 1998, always with this idea of curating this collection that I was talking to you about, trying to be as museum-like as possible. We like a museum, except pieces are for sale. Costa Rica is not ex exactly known for arts and culture. It's, let's face it, I mean, a lot of people come here for the, na the natural world and adventure tourism. So a lot of people, they might be here for a month, go home and not know who the Costa Ricans are, not know who the people are. So that's what we wanted to change. We wanted to put a face on the culture of, of Costa Rica. First in the tribal focus, we have represented here three groups from Panama and two groups from north of us uh, in, in Honduras and, and, and Nicaragua. So that's the indigenous side of the collection. And the rest of the collection is what we call artes folklorica, folk, folkloric arts or popular arts. And it's the rest of the demographic. We're talking about Afro-Caribbean expression from the Caribbean coast family traditions, artists who really sort of capture the spirit of Costa Rica and, and what it's like to live here. And, and we're fair trade. Without the fair trade philosophy, we wouldn't exist. Having the artists tell us what their piece costs, they get paid in the moment. We're not a consignment gallery. We, we pay the artists in, in the moment, whether we're in their villages or if they make the trip up to the capital with their pieces. Yeah, let's go ahead and um, take a look around. Um, of course, this is, folk arts would cover the, like I was saying, the Afro-Caribbean community, the Campesina, family arts, the Ticos, let's say Ticos meaning like the general population. Right. As opposed to the tribal people. When people purchase pieces, they get literature, written information about where it's from, the materials, the symbolism, the stories behind the pieces are very important. These amazing baskets, arguably, some of the best, most intricate traditional baskets in the world are made by women of the Embarabonan tribes. These masks are very, very popular, and um, and some are are actually used in the ceremony. You might be able to get in your your video a video of oh, a video. Oh, these are ceremonies for here. Oh wow! This is from 2009, where the tribe gave us the go ahead to roll film, like you're doing now, uh, during this three-day ceremony. But they've been doing it for, for centuries. And what is the ceremony that happens? Is it a single, a certain ceremony each year? It is. It's an annual ceremony. In Spanish, it's called La Danza o el Juego de los Diablitos, mm. which means the dance or the game of the little devils. And it's uh, that's what the Spanish call this. They have their own native language, and it really, they're the, in their language, is called the Cabru Ro, which in Brunca means, really talks about warriors, defending warriors, who are these uh, so-called little devils are figures that actually represent their ancestral warriors who indeed did defend as best they could their territorial integrity when the Spanish invaded and tried to colonize, well, tried and, uh, and uh, succeeded. What they're really representing at the end of the day is, is survival. That's their victory. These are, which are the Kabir, I was just mentioning the Kameka, about 8,000 of them. They're very, very isolated people. They don't even speak Spanish. Mm -hmm. And the best we could do, because they live, live a very hard scrabble life, these are these bark fiber pieces they make. Wow. But hey, we, we did it. Our objective was to have all eight tribes represented That's in the gallery. So, cool. so we did at least yeah. something from each of the, wow. the groups. Yeah. The other pieces that I was about to explain are so interesting. 
are fantastic copies of the originals that you'd see in the museums that hopefully you get to see. Mm -hmm. We're talking about the stone and the pottery, at least in this, uh, the jade. Uh, and these are all really fantastic copies. Okay. This this tribe on the, the back right here? Yeah. Nobuble, one of the, I think, Caracan, very unassimilated people. Mm -hmm. They hardly speak Spanish, they just speak their native languages and mm -hmm. they generally try to stay away. A canoe, this is our Bribri canoe. Oh, Bribri. I've Bri -bri. heard of the Bribri. -bri. Yeah. yeah, my name is Bribri. -bri. The name Namu means oh, jaguar okay. in, in, in the Bribri -bri language. Very reduced in number wow. and culture. This Dang. is a wet tire piece here. What you're standing This on. one. Oh. This is a wet tire. Oh, this one. To have. Okay. Yeah. And, and this too. And the, this mat, yeah. They're okay. called petates and um, this is one of the very few things that you can, you can acquire yeah. that are made by them. These are from an interesting population. Nika. Ticos, uh, meaning they're up by the Nicaraguan border, in what they call Capacina, which are country folk tradition. Yeah. And they're doing these oil paintings, lovely oil yeah. paintings, the typical Solentanami school of oil painting. Hmm. And these folk carvings are also done by them, which are really popular yeah. and, and expensive and, expense and fun. Hmm. My passion comes from putting a face on who the Costa Ricans are. There are people here, and you know, it's very interesting to connect with that that vibe that spirit it's all about honoring the cultures of the land there's a whole cultural mosaic like in any country and that's what we're here to show and i hope um i hope it, it grows and, and people get to know more around the world about costa rican culture all right guys well i hope you enjoyed this video I, that was really interesting for me to learn about all of the culture here and the tribes and being able to see it with my own eyes and i really appreciate you taking the time to talk a little bit oh, sure. uh, about everything here if you want to check out more information where can they find you at our website certainly uh, galerianamu.com all right well thanks so much guys for watching give this video a thumbs up if you liked it and i'll see you in the next video Bye! <laughs>